Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 8.1c. In the previous video, we kind of talked about plasma and tissue fluid. So in this video, we'll be talking about white blood cells and red blood cells. White blood cells and red blood cells are both made in the bone marrow from the same types of stem cells, specifically the mesenchymal stem cell. And yeah, uh, these are multipotent stem cells that are found in our bone marrow. Let's start by going with white blood cells. Okay, so white blood cells' main function, we know that it's for the defense of the body, for fighting diseases and pathogens. There's another name for white blood cells as well, leukocytes. Sounds fancy, sounds scary, it is not. Leukocytes just means white blood cells. Now there are two types of white blood cells here, number one, phagocytes, and number two, lymphocytes. Let's look at phagocytes. Phagocytes, they are produced throughout your life and the function is to patrol in the blood, tissues, and organs. And this kind of makes sense, um, especially when you think of last video where I spoke about how white blood cells, some of them can exit the blood vessels and go to the tissue. And phagocytes is one of those white blood cells that can do so. They patrol the blood, tissues, and organs and look for invaders and they remove any dead cells and pathogens they can find by phagocytosis. Now, it's important to note that phagocytes are involved in non-specific defense. So they're defending the body, but they're just um, engulfing anything that is non-self. So what are your cells? Your cells all have markers, which are glycoproteins, chapter 4 stuff, glycoproteins or proteins or glycolipids that are specific for your cells, right? If there are any pathogens or dead cells or cancer cells that do not have the same markers, we say that they have non-self antigens. Antigens, also made out of glycolipids or glycoproteins or proteins, right? But they don't have, they are not, they don't look like the ones we have. So, Phagocytes have um, actually receptors. Whoops. Phagocytes actually have receptors to differentiate between self markers and non self antigens. And whenever they see something that is not you, not self, then they would attack it regardless of what it is. So it's a non specific defense. Now, its appearance is quite interesting. Phagocytes all have low nuclei and granular cytoplasm due to its many vesicles. Now, the vesicles are a result of phagocytosis, and also they also have a lot of lysosomes, which are involved in this process. You can read or uh, watch this process explained in chapter 4, which was the previous chapter. Go find it. Now, a little bit about the lobe nuclei. There's actually two types of phagocytes, and the lobe nuclei looks different. For the monocyte, you can see this is a nuclei, which is not circular, but it's a little bit, you know, lobed. Uh, whereas the neutrophil has a lobe nuclei as well, but it has multiple lobes. Multiple lobes. So, yeah. Um, it differs, depends on the phagocytes. Um, speaking about monocytes and neutrophils, let's talk about neutrophils first and its specific you know, details. Neutrophils, as we've seen just now, is a multi-lobe nucleus. And as we've mentioned, all phagocytes have receptor proteins that can differentiate from self and non-self. And basically, neutrophils can identify pathogens, invaders, as non-self. When, when there is an infection, large numbers of neutrophils are released from the bone marrow and accumulate at the site of infection. What it does is that it is, it's quite short-lived and it can engulf the pathogen. However, it will die after that. So it goes to the invasion site, it accumulates there, engulfs the pathogens and dies. And when it dies, it actually forms pus dead neutrophils is pus yes that's disgusting yellow sticky fluid in your pimple yep those are dead neutrophils shows that your immune system is working i guess now um different from that also under the umbrella of phagocytes are monocytes um and monocytes actually mature into macrophages 
Both monocyte and macrophages have a lobe nucleus, which is kind of like a kidney bean shaped thing. And their size is larger than neutrophils a little bit. So you can, you can differentiate them. Also, it's a single lobe, whereas neutrophils is a multi-lobe. So they are different in appearance. Like all phagocytes, they have receptor proteins on its membrane. And also, again, it can identify pathogens as non-cells separate from our own self markers. So, yeah. Um, now, what is the difference between monocyte and macrophages? So monocyte, again, is the not so mature version, it matures into macrophages. Monocytes usually circulate in the blood and when it leaves the blood and enters organs, that's when we consider it um, as mature, right? Macrophages are found in organs such as liver, lungs, spleen, kidneys, and lymph nodes. And yeah, they are, um, they are not very different in terms of morphology, like in terms of appearance. However, we can determine whether it's a monocyte and or macrophage depending on the location. So again, monocyte looks like this, it's in the blood. Macrophage is in the tissues, in the organs and other places. This in contrast to neutrophils are long-lived cells, so they don't die immediately after digesting the bacteria. They live on. But similar to uh, neutrophils though, both neutrophils and monocytes and macrophages as well, they all have granular cytoplasm um, because of the vesicles that are in them. They have many, many vesicles. You can see how it's very different from the red blood cells surrounding them, which have this like smooth appearance, whereas um, these, these monocytes here have like dots, like a grainy appearance. Those are called granular granules, granular cytoplasm. Okay, so that's phagocytes. Again, two main types of white blood cells, phagocytes and lymphocytes. So what's up with lymphocytes? Lymphocytes are also produced in the bone marrow before birth. Okay, it's not produced throughout life, just in the bone marrow before birth. They are involved in specific immune responses. So this lymphocyte would be specifically targeting a specific pathogen, a specific type of bacteria, for example. It, it circulates around the blood and lymph and therefore giving rise to a lymphocyte. So these are cells that circulate in the lymph, but also in the blood. And what it does, it is that it circulates and if there's an infection they would go to that site of infection and accumulate there. Now its appearance is different from monocyte and neutrophil. First of all it's much smaller I mean, you can look it's a little bit bigger than red blood cell but just a little bit not very big it's smaller and it also has this like large round nucleus which takes up pretty much all the space and there's only very little cytoplasm in it. Okay, very little comparatively to the nucleus. And yeah, that's how lymphocytes look at look like, and you can differentiate them with monocytes and neutrophils under the light microscope. Now there are two main types of lymphocytes, um, both made in the bone marrow, but they mature in different places and have different functions, which we'll be exploring more of in chapter 11. But here's like the general differences, right? Two types of lymphocytes. One is B cells or B lymphocytes. These mature in the bone marrow. So they are made in the bone marrow and mature in the bone marrow. B cells produce antibodies. This is their main function. There's also T lymphocytes, also called T cells, which are also made in the bone marrow. However, it matures in the thymus. Therefore, T cells, T lymphocytes, maturing in the thymus. It does not produce antibodies. It does something else, which you don't need to know yet, but both are required to work together in order to defend the immune system. You'll learn more about these two types of cells in chapter 11 at the end of the AS syllabus. Now, if you take all these types of blood cells and you put it under a microscope, Okay, uh, we can put a small drop of blood even from ourselves and put it on a slide and just like push the top slide 
across. This is called blood smear. And if we look under a microscope, we can easily identify these different types of cells just based on their morphology. If you're not sure how to identify yet, pause this video right now and try to refer back to your previous slides and, you know, figure out which cells here are which. One, two, three. All right, let me tell you the answer. We can see here, this cell here, this white blood cell, has very little cytoplasm. It's almost not visible here, one large nucleus. And we can see this for this tree as well. These tree cells here are lymphocytes, for sure. We can't tell if they are B lymphocytes or T lymphocytes. That's okay, lymphocytes is enough. We can see this multi-lobe um, nucleus here. And just by looking at the multi-lobe nucleus, you can identify that these two feathers, this tree, are neutrophils for sure. And these row on the right, look at its kidney bean shaped nucleus, single lobe nucleus, quite big compared to red blood cells around them, quite a lot of cytoplasm. And these here is most likely monocytes. Well, of course, it's from the blood, right? It's not in the tissue cells. So, most likely monocytes in the bloodstream. Very nice. So, yeah, you will need to identify this in your exams. So it's important to know how they look like and visualize in your head. Now, how do you differentiate from red blood cells though? Now this looks quite straightforward, but here's the vocabulary to know how to describe it. Well, first of all, quite obvious, white blood cells has nucleus, whereas red blood cells do not. White blood cells are mostly larger than erythrocytes, except for lymphocytes, which are about the same size. They are spherical or irregular in shape. However, um, the red blood cell is biconcave in shape. Remember that um, when answering a question on differences, you always have to talk about both sides. So this is about white blood cell, but you need to talk about red blood cell as well. The complete, you need to talk about the opposite feature. Therefore, phagocytes have a granular cytoplasm. Uh, lymphocytes do not, as, and red blood cells definitely do not. So yeah, I think it's quite easy to differentiate them. This is just extra vocabulary to help you know how to describe them. Speaking of red blood cells, let, let's talk about it now. Mm -hmm. Now, red blood cells are also called erythrocytes. Fancy name. White blood cells called leukocytes. Red blood cells, erythrocytes. Sounds scary, means the same thing. Red blood cells are actually relatively short-lived. They only live for 120 days. So your, your body is actually constantly producing new red blood cells. The main function is, obviously, to transport oxygen to body tissues. Now, what are its features? Again, we know it. We have seen it in many places. This is the vocabulary to know how to describe it. It is small. It's quite small and it's flexible. There's only a diameter about six to eight micrometers, which is quite small for a eukaryotic cell. It's able to squeeze through capillaries, which are around seven micrometers. So one capillary can fit around one, you know, one and a bit red blood cells. Now, why? Why is this beneficial? Now, if it's able to squeeze through capillaries, um, and the capillary is just nice at size, this reduces the diffusion distance. So if oxygen needs to diffuse from the red blood cell out, they don't need to travel very, very far. Number two, biconcave disc. Now, why do they need to have a biconcave disc? This increases surface area for diffusion of oxygen to cells. And that would be great. Now, however, when you see this kind of diagram in your um, micrographs, sometimes uh, it's quite hard to tell its 3D shape. You can see here that the top view shows red blood cell to be rather circular. And uh, that's a reason why you cannot really write in your answers, especially if it's paper tree and it's a top view, that it's biconcave because you cannot really distinguish, you cannot really see that biconcave shape in a 2D kind of micrograph. You need a side view to be able to see that it's biconcave. So yeah, be careful when you're writing your answers, especially when it says refer to the figure above, then you need to say what you see. So yeah, um, what else about red blood cells? 
it's small and flexible. It's a bicon gift this to increase surface area. What else? No nucleus, no mitochondria, no endoplasmic reticulum. Why? So that there is more room for hemoglobin. And this maximizes the number of oxygen that can be carried by red blood cell. By the way, don't you think this is really cute? This here is a character from the anime um, Cells at Work. And yeah, it's really cute. It's really fun to watch. Most of the content there is not even in a level syllabus. It means I learned in university. But it's great. It's really cute. I do recommend it. Anyways, yeah, those are red blood cells, and they, and those those are its features. Last but not least, we need to talk about hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is not red blood cells. So many students tend to confuse this. There is a lot of this small, tiny molecule called hemoglobin in one red blood cell. So one red blood cell can carry so many molecules of oxygen, okay, because it has so many hemoglobin. Now, this is just a recap from a previous chapter. Just so you know, this is what's going on. This is the structure here. I don't want to go into detail because we've already covered it. Uh, you can pause this video if you want to read. But basically, um, what it does is to bind oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin in lungs. And it binds four molecules of oxygen in order to form oxyhemoglobin. You know the rest of the details. We'll talk more about oxygen transport as well as carbon dioxide transport, which are related to in the next video. So I hope this video was great. See you next video. Bye.